What's up, JB crew? Welcome back to another banger. Okay, man, we are back with another one. We got another drum breakdown. Um, y'all have actually been really digging the drum stuff and y'all have asked me to go back to more of that stuff. So I'm gonna incorporate more of that into the content. Now, this is Grayson. Um, I, I think he's on Drumio, which is a really dope platform. So if you are a drummer and you're interested in doing some cool stuff, just check out Drumio. They have some really nice content. Anyway, back to Grayson. Grayson uh, popped on my Instagram feed like a while ago killing solos um one thing that a lot of people don't really know is that i grew up playing a lot of straight ahead like bebops kind of stuff i mean i studied guys like sunny Payne and jeff tane watts and you know obviously the greats like buddy rich and gene Krupp and all whatever long story short this guy is probably one of the most authentic that i've seen to the jazz community um being such a young cat um so let's just go ahead and peep what he's got going on this is a uh, caravan iconic jazz record Even the way his snare drum is tilt, yeah. Wow, okay, there's a lot of really, really cool stuff happening. All right, so let's just talk about uh, just stylistically how he's approaching this in setup, right? So setup-wise, he has that tilted snare drum. If you look at Buddy Rich, Gene Krupa, um, and some of the older cats, they would do this. I think maybe Dave Weckl and Vinny Cayuta still do this right now, and I, I could be wrong, so don't quote me. But essentially what they would do is, because they play traditional grip, uh, they have a stick out here, yeah is that they would use this grip here and to get that rim shot action because you t traditionally had your elbow a little bit higher when you played, it just made it a lot easier to have a slight tilt. Um, another thing these guys did really, really well, especially Buddy Rich is like notorious for this, is that showmanship of going in and out of things has that kind of just flair. I call it the sauce. They give that sauce over top of it and they'll lock in, crack on over, and you saw him kind of crisp on over to that hi-hat and just back locked into the to straight ahead jazz here. Super, super nice. He has a very nice crossover and he's beyond fluid at what he's doing. It's Everything he's doing is very intentional. This is not by accident, uh, which is also a really great thing to watch anyone who's fluent in whatever they do, do, if that makes sense. Um, and, and as we kind of panned into this action here, there's a, there's a really cool thing that jazz drummers do that a lot of other genres don't really do because they don't have to and it is a when they're playing their bass drum beater they will in in our world I mean the r b gospel like if you go on the metal that kind of stuff any pretty much any other genre besides jazz will do this they'll keep the beater on the kick drum it's not a good or a bad thing but there's definitely a different tone here a lot of jazz drummers, because they don't have any muffling or, or anything that's gonna stifle the sound and their kick drum, they have to keep it open. So when they attack it, you'll notice that they bounce back off, very similar to when they play a drum. They don't keep the bead of the stick on the drum, they, they release it off or they come off of there. Same thing with the kick drum. So you'll notice here, if we stay on this camera a little bit longer, that he's tapping and back off. It's a different skill because you still have to play aggressively, but you can't keep it there. You have to use that rebound and control. It's a hard skill, but it's a really good one here because you can get a nice tone and texture out of that kick drum. All right, let's keep going. Do you see that? He's kind of coming off every time. Woo! Drums sound great. Yeah! Woo! C 
See that? Different textures there. Lock in! In the wood on the base. Oh. Do you see how relaxed this man is? Yeah. See that traditional grip? His hi-hat technique is great. Catch that leg. Ba -da -da. Face drop technique again. Straight ahead, lock in. Ba -da. Woo! That turn is crazy. Oh, nice. We're probably gonna get this all. Okay, now that a lot of cool shit just happened there. That was a very, very, very buddy rich approach to that. Even his phrasing, how he was playing the symbols, his phrasing going in and out of that, the variations um, in terms of rhythmic patterns as he's improvising there, so nice. It's very authentic. And it, look, man, uh, that's what I'm saying about Grayson. He he sounds the most authentic to that, that real dirty like bebop, big band era, you know? And a lot of guys get kind of close, but he sounds like he was there. Like he, he grew up in an environment, like he, he was hanging with the cats, he was part of that culture. And that's really what you want to do if you're going to mimic this style. You're looking for the authenticity there. He's so good. I mean, so, so good. Now you'll notice he's kind of switching from traditional grip back to match grip by choice. It's just whatever is there. One sign of a true professional that I always kind of look at, not look at and says I'm looking for it, but you'll kind of notice that shit isn't always gonna go well, right? And, and you notice as he hit one of the symbols, he looked at it and was like, I gotta fix this. And nothing changed. He kept it right, blah, 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 let me adjust, blah, 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 and moving forward. Now there's something when we're going through schooling and, and, and if you're not in schooling, what you might study is, is what we call five-way independence. And when you're a drummer, we have four-way independence organically because there's a right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, that's four-way. The second, or the, the last one, the fifth one here is what we call essentially like a, a, a vocal, right? So if you can kind of sing the phrasing and it doesn't mean you have to like verbally sing the phrasing, but if you're singing that in your head, ba, ba, da, 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 di, da, da, ba, di, da, di, da, 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 Every instrument is going to do that because that's how they're going through their phrasing. But as a drummer, what this essentially does is that if you're all kind of in sync here, you'll notice that as they're comping things, they're kind of matching that same melody again. Why? Because we already know it and it just feels right. And we're all singing that. And it was, oh, we're kind of in and out of there, especially the voicings, how they're kind of doing a stab, improvising over the solo. So, so nice. And, and, and for him to do that so well, Man, it, it's nice. Yeah, yep, yep. All right, let's get into this solo. Also, good choice on uh, drums. I play Pearl too, and cymbals. Minor. 
Do you see how he's coming off of there? I was waiting for him to do that. Okay, no, this, back to what I was saying about Trooper Fistos. If something goes wrong, you're able to keep the same timing there and nothing changes. You just make that adjustment and move forward. He did that perfectly. So he did not do that on purpose in terms of the first part. He hit his sticks by accident, but what you have to do when you make a mistake like that, especially in a solo, repeat it. That way the audience never knows that you messed that up. You feel like I'm still in control of what's going on. You're still listening to yourself. It's just a way that it doesn't appear like, uh, or it doesn't appear like, oh, this man messed up. Oh, you hit the stakes or you hit the rim. No, that was intentional. He did it again. So nice. See? Now you make a thing out of it. You make it a phrase. You make it, yes, yes, Grayson. Dynamic range is beautiful. Yeah! Yeah! Notice hot hat? Yeah. He did it again, you mother! Buddy Rich Flair to him, man. I'm telling you, his dynamic range is so nice for just keeping this solo interesting. Also, his timbres, his phrasing. I mean, everything about this is just amazing. Work it out. Yo, this is crazy. This 
This drum sound really good. His showmanship is so beautiful. Grayson, oh. sir. Yeah! This is crazy. Ah, yeah, put up, put up, put up, put up, put up, put up. That was cool. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought was happening. Yeah, man. Get back in that swim. Ah, boba, go. And now we swing it, let's go. In the fucking wood. He is smacking the pot. What did I just watch? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Yo! All right, all right, okay. I didn't want to interrupt that solo because my man was just locked in. Like, I felt, I felt like it would be me actually interrupting him. Okay, there's so much to dissect here. Okay, I think we all can agree that he's incredible, right? He, he probably kept most of us here 
excluding being a musician, very captivated with him, his drum solo. And to do that, there's a wide variety of things we have to do, but let's just acknowledge that that happened. Okay, now let's break down some of the things he does. So dynamic range here, meaning just from soft to loud, he had covered. Um, knocking out different colors and textures of drums, meaning going from the inside to the middle, to the outside, utilizing rims, sides, that kind of stuff, he had covered. Same thing on the cymbals, all the way up to the bow, to the, to, uh, the excuse me, to the bell of the cymbal, he had covered. Incorporating all of those things inside of dynamic ranges, meaning you might play the cymbal really loud, but the drum might be soft. Very nice. We went from slow to fast, also very nice. To be able to kind of mess up, but not let the audience know you messed up, or just something happened by accident, it just shows a, a, a hyper attention to detail and focus about what you're doing to be able to repeat that and to also know no matter what happens, you can reduplicate that. This is a master of your own craft. You can, you can essentially, whatever you think of, you can do. That's an incredible skill to have. Like I mentioned, his bass drum technique, phenomenal. There's a really cool thing he did for a, a, a good portion of the solo where he kept that hi-hat going as he was doing whatever he wanted. And what that does, when we talked about five-way independence and four-way independence, it just shows you as a musician, like, oh, this guy has real master for control because no matter what I do with the other three, this left one here, this fourth one, is always gonna stay on autopilot, it's not moving. It's a really great thing, and if you're not hip to music, it gives you as an audience something to listen to. I could go on about how amazing he is, but I think the fact that you all made it this long in this video, further let you know how amazing it is. Anyway, let's go make sure you guys go follow Grayson um, and on his YouTube channel and all that good stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll tag him in the description that way we're good to go. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, comment below if there's any other videos you want me to react to. Um, I'm gonna do more drum content, but only if you all are digging it. That's just, um, that's the deal. So um, anyway, man, so JB Crow, I appreciate you.